Welcome to this Tools Jagged tutorial impressions on the best spar ever. People have asked which is the best spar. You have six combinations. You have the chain, longest reach ever and very impressive. You have the Q-tip, longest solid spar and you can have five in your team. Vier, nur vier. You have the staff, very strong and striking. You have the longsword, which is, well, it's a longsword, you know. You have the shield, you can't hit through a shield, can you? And you have the ninja combination, the dual wielding short sword, yeah. But which one is actually the best for playing juggle? Which one would be the meta? Let's have a closer look on this. I'm speaking only from my thoughts and experience, so you are welcome to leave your own views and ideas in the comments section or contact me through juggerblog.net, the international juggerblog. First, the chain. A chain can rule the field and teams with excellent chain players are often in the upper tiers, at least how I could see it. Also, only very few teams discard the chains completely. So, is the chain the mightiest of them all? Quite likely, is it? But here comes the catch. A chain is maybe the hardest spar to master. Maybe, but only maybe, matched by the shield, which offers very different challenges altogether. An average chain player will see herself soon caught and taken down. A bad chain may even hit their own teammates. Also, Chain is probably the most demanding spar concerning endurance and matched only by the shield concerning agility. A chain often dances, a dance with force, whirling over the field, consuming energy like nothing. Last but not least, latest in the upper tires, you will encounter dedicated anti-chain players. They will do advanced changeling and cross maneuvers to get set against the chain and they are likely to catch even more experienced ones. Nevertheless, hard training might fruit in you ruling the field now and then. Long players are a bit more like favorites for the chain position due to the significant reach bonus they receive. Second, the Q-tip. The Jugger Q-tip is the longest core rod spar of all. Even more, you can score hits with both ends. In contrast to the almost equally long staff, you may even thrust and your hands are in a much more comfortable and flexible position for even more complex wielding moves. See my Jugger Q-tip against Aikido Joe tutorial on this channel. It even lost most of its weight with modern builds, annihilating one of its main drawbacks for faster attacks and parries. By light, I mean 400 gram and less, and even 400 gram is considered heavy by today's standards. Also, you can have four QT players in your team compared to only one chain. So, is the Q-tip the best spar in the Jugger toolkit? At a closer look. The total length of 2 meters shrinks to about the same effective reach as the long sword, which is about 140 meters. The handling needs more training, but if matched, both very fast thrusts and counter hits with the opposing sides are possible. The opposing side might even be more versatile for close quarter combat, where the long sword or staff might be problematic. Also, it is ideal to hit your opponent and instantly thrust against your neighboring opponent or apply quite an effective de facto double pin. Third, the staff. The staff has once been a beginner's favorite. There are some teams solely focusing on staff and chain. And indeed, the staff offers some substantial benefits. It is of a subtle length and the grip positions offer a very strong leverage and hold. You even may be able to break through a parry of lightweight spars with a forceful blow. The parry section, though nowadays unpadded for some reason quite frequently, is excellently suited for parry moves. By the way, I would still recommend padding. It looks really weird to have an unpadded parrying section, by the way. As a chain breaker, its handling is quite intuitive and strong. An intuitive spar, good on attack and parry, might we found our number one. 
maybe the staff seems not to be as popular as it once has been due to the fact that you may not thrust forbidding this extremely fast attack. Also, for the stronger hold and parrying ability, reach a sacrifice about 30 cm less than the Q-tip or the longsword, which is quite significant. Yet even though it might sound like not the best choice, the staff shines in the hands of experienced players. A quick succession of parries and counter-strikes have made some players famous for the Pac-Man style lineup eating of opponents. 4. Longsword. Number 4. Oh, the so-called longsword. Though not a weapon, nor a copy of one, the form of the longsword just invites this naming. As with the staff, even quite successful teams have chosen longsword and chain exclusive setups. Its reach equals that of the 60 cm longer Q-tip, but doesn't sacrifice agility and form for a second strike zone. Modern builds are so lightweight that they can be handled at incredible speed. Since it resembles a longsword, its handling is also very intuitive, all in all. And you can, and should, thrust with it. So, should this be our favorite? For one, the longsword profits quite a bit from sports fencing, even though that is one-handed, and a bit from HEMA, though not half as much as one may assume. Yet the parrying ability is highly limited, since your strike zone leverage works against you there, and you mainly would rely on the grip and the first quarters of your strike zone, especially with lightweight builds, which forces you to use it mostly in an offensive style. But you can try to keep opponents at a distance. In former times, the heavy longsword required quite strong forearms to make them effective. Today, though, they might invite the inexperienced for meaningless, skillless, waving around maneuvers. Yet, in skilled hands it can be an awesome spar, as well as quite a good beginner spar along with the staff. 5. The Shield One of the reasons Jugger is often perceived as a medieval sport by passers-by. A combination overestimated for its efficiency by protection. In proficient hands, the shield indeed offers excellent blocking abilities and the short sword is by far the fastest spar out there. I have elaborated enough about its strength and weakness in the past, have I? Well, to handle it effectively, you need a high agility and very fast reflexes. Since you only have those 85 cm both in length and effective reach, you have to close the distance to your opponents very quickly where you have to rely on both your agility and active shield blocks to avoid getting hit. You have to operate your shield almost like a second spar. Fighting in the line, you cannot support your neighbors effectively due to the short reach and having to focus on mensure or measure can make you blind for your surroundings when engaging in a static duel. When charging in, you might ignore hits due to the nature of your combination. Yet shield players can be very quick, doing brilliant Pac-Mans and zooming around and chasing past your opponents, hitting them at the same time. Fast charge are well supported by the defensive ability of the shields. 6. Two short swords. Simple answer, no. It might look, oh, that ninja-like cool, but it isn't. For a theoretical second attack you gain by the second spar, you both sacrifice reach and protection. It is possible to parry with a second spar, yes, but it is very hard to train and apply effectively, even more with lightweight spars. Call for ignoring hits are even more likely than with the shield. Yes, there are pretty successful dual wielders, of course. But it is definitely something you need to be made for, and many say that for the same effort you need to become an average dual wielder, you might become an expert at the other spar types. But for fun, dual wielding is of course brilliant. So, which one is best? The chain? As with all spars, it has to be put into context. 
The context here is team play. There's only one chain allowed in your team, which is a drawback. And it's not as fast as the others when you get a chance to hit players close by. Also, it's very power consuming, so maybe not. But which other one it could be? We have five spars out there, or even six combinations, and one has to be OP. One has to be the meta. Has it? Well, Jugger is now played for over 25 years. And there are regular high-profile tournaments with 20 or even 60 teams, almost all over the world. During this long time, no team has found the perfect one spar to win with. All in all, it seems that both the mix of spars, in connection with personal preference, is more important than the individual type of spar. And that all spars, though extremely different by design, magically are quite equal in their different strengths and weaknesses. Which is impressive, since the spars have not been scientifically researched or something, the form has just been developed and found over time in the early years of Jugger development. So all I can suggest to you, listen to your body which spar fits best. I'm sorry, but it remains to be your choice. Have fun, and I hope to see you again on the next Urus Dragon tutorials, which might either be on tournament organization, starting from bananas to sparse checks and everything else, or it might be on uh, training a team how to participate in a tournament, effective team training for tournaments. May I also recommend to visit the International Jugger Blog, a page I set up for international jugger information, where teams of all countries present themselves, where all rules we know of are gathered in an archive, and video links are as well present for many different jugger uh, styles and teams.